Welcome everyone. We'll try that again now that I'm off mute. And thank you all for being here tonight on this, the first night of Hanukkah and the anniversary of the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights. You are in for a treat with another universal story of friendship and understanding featuring storyteller Karen Ray Kraut and puppeteer Nicole Cloran of Puppets a la Carte. My name is Katie Porter and I'm executive director of Inlandia Institute, a literary and cultural arts nonprofit based in inland Southern California. But before we begin, Inlandia Institute recognizes and our responsibility to the original and current caretakers of this land, water and air, the Cahuilla, Tongva, Luiseno and Serrano peoples and all of their ancestors and descendants, past, present, and future. Today, the Inlandia region is home to many indigenous peoples from all over the world, and we express our gratitude to them for allowing us the opportunity to live and work on these homelands. Tonight's interactive storytelling and puppetry experience is presented in conjunction with the Mission in Foundations Toward Peace Project, here on their behalf is project director Teresa Hanley to tell you a little bit more about the project. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. And on behalf of the Mission Inn Foundation, I would like to welcome everyone to Universal Stories of Friendship and Understanding. The Mission Inn Foundation and Museum is a nonprofit organization exploring the history and importance of the Mission Inn and its relationship to our community. One little known aspect of that history is that Frank Miller, the founder of the Mission Inn, was a peace activist. The Peace and Friendship Tower on Mount Rubidoux that was built in 1925 was dedicated to his efforts to promote peace and international understanding. Our project toward peace is multifaceted, exploring this history of Miller's peace activism and its legacy for us today. We are delighted to partner with Inlandia Institute to present this series of international stories exploring various aspects of peace and friendship. Today's presentation, as Katie said, is in recognition of the anniversary of the Declaration of Human Rights adopted by the United Nations on December 10th, 1948. And as uh, Katie also mentioned, today marks the beginning of the celebration of Hanukkah. And so our presentation tonight comes from Israel. This is the second of four international stories associated with our Toward Peace Project. Two more story and puppetry events will be coming in 2021, so watch your calendars for those dates. We are very proud that um, our project Toward Peace is made possible with support from California Humanities, a nonprofit partner of the National Endowment for the Humanities. You can visit calhum.org, C-A-L-H-U-M.org, to learn more about them and the many fine programs they support throughout California. I would also like to thank our local sponsors, Judith Auth, Sally and Chuck Beatty, Kathy Wright and Dwight Tate, and Walter Parks. So I'm going to join you in the audience now. We are uh, in for a very special treat with Karen and Nicole. Thanks again for being here and best wishes as you celebrate the holidays and a happy and healthy new year for all of us. Thank you, Teresa. And we are so very proud to be um, a part of the Toward Peace Project. So now uh, I would like to introduce our presenters. Let's uh, first say hi to Karen Ray Kraut. Hi, everyone. So excited to see you again. And Nicole Cloran. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here and letting me play with you. <laughs> so awesome. Let's go ahead and get started. So welcome, Karen. All right. Now this story, as Katie said, comes from the country of Israel. And I just wanted to show you that country on the map. And Katie has kindly uh, brought up a map for us to take a look at here on our screen. So you can see there's Israel, it's the one in white and how close it is to Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and even Egypt. 
So that's the country of Israel. And this version of the story that I'm going to tell you, actually, there are about five different versions that are, are interwoven into this story. But if you would like to find this story later, I recommend this book. Katie's going to show us the cover, The Wisdom Bird, retold by Sheldon Oberman, A Tale of Solomon and Sheba, a wonderful book that I found initially in the Riverside Library. So here comes our story. I die, dividi, bye, bye, but I die, die. I die, dividi, bye, bye, did I die, die. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They say that many, many years ago, in the country of Israel, there was a great king. He was the third king of Israel. And you could show which king he was if you want to. He was the third one. Yes. His name was Solomon. And there is a great story about him. Do you know he ascended the throne when he was only 12 years old? And the story they tell is that one night after he had been crowned king, he had a dream. And in that dream, the Lord spoke to him and said, Oh, Solomon, I will grant any wish. Just make a wish and I will grant it for you. And do you know what that boy of only 12 years old wished for? Wisdom. That was all he wanted. And they say that from that day forward, his wisdom grew and grew with every day that passed until people said he was the wisest man in the world. He could answer any riddle. And you can show it if you want to. Anyone, any riddle, he could answer it. He could solve the most difficult problems. You could show it too if you want to. The most difficult ones, he could solve them. He was amazing. And in addition to his great wisdom, he also had a magic ring. Yes, you could show the ring if you want to. And when he wore that magic ring, do you know what he could do? He could understand the language of the birds. And the birds loved King Solomon. You can show that too if you want to. Let's try it. They loved him. But he had a favorite. I can't resist. I have to tell you. Oh, can we show that picture of that bird that was King Solomon's favorite bird? It was the hoopoe. The little hoopoe bird. It was actually a very tiny bird, which you could hold right on your finger. Thank you so much. Yes. And that little hoopoe bird loved King Solomon as well. And one day, the hoopoe bird decided to fly as far as it could fly. You could show it if you want to. It flew and flew. It wanted to fly as far as it could go to come to the end of the land that was ruled by Solomon. And so it flew, 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 flew until it came to the kingdom of Sheba. Now, the hoopoe bird soon learned once he arrived in that kingdom that the queen of Sheba was considered the wisest woman in the world. Well, the hoopoe bird couldn't help thinking, wouldn't it be wonderful if the wisest woman could meet the wisest man? And so the hoopoe bird flew to the palace of the great queen. He flew in the window and sure enough, she could also understand the language of the birds. And so the hoopoe bird said, oh, beautiful and great queen. Did I forget to tell you? She was incredibly beautiful too. Oh, great queen, the hoopoe bird said, I come from a kingdom where the king is called the wisest man in the world. And it's true. And now that I'm here in your kingdom, I have discovered that you are the wisest woman in the world. Oh, you two should meet. And then the hoopoe bird told the queen of Sheba many stories about King Solomon. And she became so curious that she decided to take the hoopoe bird's advice 
and travel to Israel to meet that king. So she gathered first all of her servants. You can show it if you want to. She gathered them together. There were hundreds of them. And then she gathered all of her great warriors. You could show the warriors too. They were mighty and strong and proud. And then she gathered together all of her fine nobles and they traveled for many months to reach the great city of Jerusalem where King Solomon held his court. The gates of that city were 30 feet high. You can show them if you want to. 30 feet, can you imagine that? And so they stood outside the gate and the servants beat on powerful drums. And you could do this with me too, if you want to. Boom, 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 boom. And then the great warriors came forward and they shook their spears as they dance and showed their agility and power. Ah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah. Well, then the great nobles came forward with their many gifts, precious stones, gold, silver, spices, extraordinary cloth. You could show it if you want to. Extraordinary cloth. Oh, it was so impressive that those great 30 foot gates swung open. You could show it. And there stood King Solomon himself. And he bowed with the utmost courtesy to the queen of Sheba. You could show it if you want to, it's kind of fun. Let's try it. And then he said, oh, great queen, you have traveled far. You have brought many gifts. What can I do to reply? What can I do for you? And do you know what the Queen of Sheba said? I want you to teach me something important. And so King Solomon led the Queen of Sheba to his palace. After all of her servants and nobles and warriors had rested and been refreshed, the next day he set a place of honor beside his throne. And she sat there with him as he solved all the complicated problems that his people brought him. And then he answered her many complicated riddles. Why then, he read to her from his book, the Song of Songs. And after all of that, he said, now great queen, uh, 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 what would you like? Well, I, I wanted you to teach me something important, O oh great King Solomon. And I see you have much knowledge and much skill, but what can you do with your knowledge? What kind of power does it give you? And so King Solomon said, well, great queen, just ask whatever you wish and I will do it. And she said, make me a palace of bird beaks. Everyone was shocked. You could show it if you want to, let's try. <gasps> Why, that would take the beaks of all the birds in the world. But what could King Solomon do? He had already promised. So he took the Queen of Sheba up the tallest tower in that city. You could show how they walked up and up and up if you want to. And then he stood out on top of the tower and he called out to all the birds, birds of the north, birds of the south, the east, the west, come, I need your beaks. And soon the sky was darkened with all the beating wings of those birds. You could show them if you want to. And then they all settled down to hear what King Solomon needed to do with their beaks. But you know what? 
one bird was not there. And I bet you can guess which one it was. It was the hoopoe bird. And soon the hoopoe bird came flying up, all out of breath. You could show it if you want to. Oh, great king. Yes, I am here. And I want you to know, I have traveled far and I have heard many things. I know what you wish to ask of me and all of the birds of the world who are assembled here. And I want you to know that I cannot give up my beak so easily. So this is what I propose, O oh great king. I will ask you three riddles. If you could answer all those three riddles correctly, I will give you my beak without complaint. But if you cannot answer even one of them, you must promise that you will allow me and all of the birds to keep our beaks. King Solomon knew that he could solve any riddle. And so he easily said, yes, I accept your challenge. And so the hoopoe bird asked his first riddle. He was a little nervous. You could show how nervous he was if you want to. Ooh. All right. What is it that is delicate enough to put food in a baby's mouth and at the same time strong enough to bore a hole in wood? King Solomon said, a bird's beak, of course. A bird's beak can give the food to the little baby birds and also bore a hole in a tree to find food. And then King Solomon couldn't help thinking, hmm, their beaks are so important. What will they do without them? You could show that if you want to. What will they do without them? But then he turned to all the birds. He said, am I right? Am I right? And the birds all said, oh, yes. Oh, yes, great king. So then the hoopoe bird asked his second riddle. He was even a little more nervous this time. You could show it if you want to. <laughs> All right. Oh, great king, who is it who was never born and will never die? And King Solomon said, oh, that is so easy. The Lord of all creation, blessed be he. The creator of all the lands and the creatures in this world. And then King Solomon couldn't help thinking, the Lord created the birds to be free. But then he turned to all the birds and said, am I right? Am I right? And the birds said, oh yes, oh yes. Ugh. Only one more riddle left. Can you imagine how nervous the hoopoe bird was? Who could show me? Ooh. Ooh. The hoopoe bird looked out of all his, his family of fellow creatures, all the birds. But he plucked up his courage and he asked his last riddle. Oh, great king, what water is it? that never rises from the ground or falls from the sky. And King Solomon said, that is a also easy riddle to solve, little hoopoe bird. Why, it is a tear which rises from a suffering heart and falls from a sad eye. And then King Solomon turned to all the birds and said, am I right? Am I right? And all the birds shed tears and said, oh, yes, oh, yes. And King Solomon touched his own face and realized that it was wet with tears. And then the hoopoe bird said, oh, great king, I have failed. You have answered all of my riddles. 
But then King Solomon surprised the hoople bird by saying, Oh no, little hoople bird, come on to my finger. And the hoople bird flew and landed on the finger of the great king. Oh, little bird, maybe I have answered your riddles, but you have asked me and raised another question. By asking those riddles, another question I could not answer. Why should I have the right to take your beaks? Why should I have the right to harm any creature just to show my power? And then he set the hoople bird free and he spoke to all the birds and said, there will be no palace of bird beaks. Oh, all the birds rose up into the sky and they swooped and twirled and flew everywhere. You can show it if you want to. Oh, oh, oh. And then all the birds settled down joyfully waiting to hear what King Solomon would say next because they knew he would surely have something more to say. Well, then he turned to the queen of Sheba and said, oh, my great queen, I am so sorry. I cannot fulfill my promise to you. But the queen of Sheba was surprisingly happy. Oh, oh, great King Solomon. No, no, I asked you to teach me something important. And you have, you've taught me, it's more important to break a promise than to do something that is wrong. But now we have something important to do, you and I. We must think of a way to reward the hoopoo bird who has taught a king and a queen a lesson and has saved all the birds of the world. And so King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba put their heads together. And they came up with an idea. They had made a beautiful little gold crown and they placed it on the hoople bird's head. And as soon as they did wonder of wonders, the little golden crown was changed to feathers. Let's see a picture of the hoople bird with its crown of beautiful feathers. Oh, there it is. Yes, and from that day to this, the hoople bird wears a beautiful crown of feathers on its head. I die, de bitty bye bye, de bye bye bye. And that's the end of that. Hmm. And now let's hear from Ms. Nicole and an another wonderful friend who I don't think you've met yet. Hello, everybody. I'm here today with my very good friend, Rebecca. Hi, everyone. Rebecca and I have been friends for a very long time, haven't we? Mm -hmm. And I just can't focus and uh, for my part until I say thank you to everyone who is out there. I took a little look at participants and I'm grateful to all of you, but a special little shout out to my parents on the East Coast, my teacher friend Janice on the East Coast, and all my little um, puppeteers for my puppet club here in Riverside. Thank you for being out there. And thank you for all of you who I have not met yet. Okay, Rebecca, what did you think of that story? Oh, I really like that story. Yeah, what, what was it about it that you liked? Well, I liked the hoopoo bird, best of all. Yeah, I think I like the hoopoo bird best too. Uh, what made the hoopoo bird special? Oh, the hoopoo bird is very, very clever. Yes, the hoopoo bird asks three, one, two, three questions, three riddles, and um, and that was very clever. Yes, I see, but but the king could answer them all. So was he really that clever? Oh, yes, because the clever part was that even though the king answered them, the hoopoo bird's riddles still made him change his mind. Oh, you have a very good point. Rebecca? Yeah. Do you remember the three riddles? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, wait, I, I think I do. Yes, one was, um, one was, um, yeah, yeah. Um, what um, was never born and can never die? Right, and the answer was the Lord Creator. That is correct. Now, why did that make the king think twice about taking the beaks from the birds? Well, because he thought everything on this, in this world is put here is unique and special and deserves to be here. And so 
the king didn't think he had a right to take something so unique away. You are right. And you know what? The hoopoe bird is so unique that it's in its own taxonomic family. Tax to who now? <laughs> taxonomic family. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> a taxonomic family is the way that scientists classify different animals. And so the hoopoe bird is in a is in a category all by itself because it's so unique. Wow. Yeah. So can you think of something that's um, unique to you, Rebecca? And all of you out there, if there's something about yourself that's unique, you can put it in the chat. And I just want to point out here that what's unique about you, all the things that are come together to make you you, make you unique. Now, something you do, someone else might also do. And if you think that's special about you, you can share it. Oh, I, I thought of one. I thought of one. Okay, Rebecca, what is unique about you? I am a talking monkey mm -hmm. and a puppet. Yes, you are. And also, I was adopted and ich spreche Deutsch. Oh, you speak German. Well, isn't that nice? A bilingual monkey. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's see if anyone has. Oh, Rebecca, someone's saying hi to you. Oh, hi, Ving. Hi, Homan. What's special about you? Well, well, we'll give them a chance to respond if they want. In the meantime, can you think of the second riddle? Yes, I can. It was what is delicate enough to put food in a baby's mouth? and strong, strong enough to bore a hole in wood. Yes, and the answer was a beak. Yes, the answer was a beak. Because mm -hmm. the beak is so important to this story. It sure is. Okay, so the beak. Now, what did that make the king think? Oh, well, the king thought if the birds can't feed their babies and they can't pick for worms, and they're not going to survive very long without their beaks. No, I think you're right. That's what the king was thinking. Rebecca? Yeah? What's something you can't survive without? Oh, um, that's easy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's you. Oh, Rebecca. Yeah, I cannot survive without you. And you know what? I cannot survive without you. Because a puppeteer can't be a puppeteer without her puppet. And a puppet can't be a puppet without her puppeteer. We need each other. And the, if, if you would like to um, share anything in the chat. Oh, let's see, Vin has told us something, Rebecca. Oh, I'd like to hear what Vin said. Okay, Vin said, um, what's special about him is that he loves to try and eat all kinds of yummy foods. I think we call that a foodie. I think you're right. It makes him happy. How nice. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Vin. Oh, and someone else has told us, Brian has told us that he cannot live without his friends. Oh, that's a good one. I like that one too. Yeah, me too. Well, thank you for sharing those things. Um, and I think it's important to mention here that um, we as adults should think about what makes us special too. It's really reaffirming. You don't have to share it in a chat, but think to yourself, what is it that makes me me? And sometimes we have to remind ourselves not to lose those parts of ourselves. Ooh, <gasps> what? Karen said she can hum and whistle at the same time. Next story time, please do that. <laughs> oh, and others, they need their parents to live. Such important things to survive. Okay, riddle number three, last riddle. Do you remember it? Yes. Um, no. Oh, you don't. I'll help you. It was about the water. Oh, yes, yes. The water, it just does not come bubble up from the ground and does not come down from the sky because it comes up from the heart and down from the sad eye. <laughs> oh, oh, oh dear, Rebecca, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Um, uh, are you all right now? Mm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm okay, okay, Whew, that was a close one there. Okay, so um, the, the king thought about the tears and he got really sad, right? Yeah, but you know what? I want to point out that the hoopoe bird was not entirely helpless. The hoopoe bird did not just have its beak completely taken, right? Mm -mm. Um, what did he do? Well, okay. We're already talking about that. Yes, I just want you to repeat it one more time. Well, he asked the king riddles. Yes, and there are other ways that the hoopoe bird is not helpless. Can you tell me? Of course. So they use their beaks um, when predators come. They can peck at them and they can use their wings to beat at them. And here's one more tidbit that I learned doing my research. They can fling their poop. What? 
Yeah. Ew, that's totally gross. Ew. Yeah, the baby birds can aim their excrement at their predators to make it really stinky and make them go away. Like there's nothing yummy here. Well, I can do something the hoopoe bird does too. Please don't tell me you're gonna fling your poop. No, gross. I'm never going near a hoopoe bird nest. Mm -mm. Okay, well, what is it you can do that the hoopoe bird can do? Well, I can do what the hoopoe bird in the story did. I can use my words. Ooh, can you give me an example? Yeah, like if somebody is playing too rough with me, then I say, no, stop. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Oh, that's, that's a very good way to use your words. And also, yes, Karen uses her words to tell stories and stories can be really powerful. I totally agree, Rebecca. And I wanna be a storyteller when I grow up. Oh, what a nice aspiration. Well, Rebecca, the hoopoe bird clearly has inspired both of us, gave us a lot to think about, didn't it? In fact, it made me think so much that I wanted to make a hoopoe bird puppet. Yeah, would you like to see it? I would love to. Okay, can you just get down and sit over there while I call the hoopoe bird over? Sure, okay, I'll see you guys later. I guess we can go see the puppet of the hoopoe bird. Okay, Rebecca, there you go, have a nice seat. Okay, so when I make a puppet, I think about what elements, what parts of the puppet are the most important to me? And when I thought about the hoopoe bird, I thought of three things I really wanted in the puppet. If you have a guess of what those, any of those three things were, you can put it in the chat. And thank you to Dennis and for your beautiful comment there about dogs. Um, okay, so the first thing, you, you don't have to put it in the chat, but think it to yourself. The first thing, that I thought I absolutely have to put in this bird is a beak because the beak was so important to the story. The second thing that I wanted to include was the crown because the crown was so beautiful and special. And the third element were the wings because of course a bird can't be a bird without wings. And also I learned that the hoopoe bird has a unique um, flight pattern with its wings. It beats it more like a butterfly in a round fashion. So I wanted those three things. And I didn't need my hoopoe bird to look exactly real because for me, I like puppets because you can tell they are puppets. And that's a special kind of wonder that awakens the imagination. So I'm going to show you the hoopoe bird that I made, but I'm gonna have you call it over to me. And I'm gonna let you know how to do that. We're gonna call it by saying, giving the same call the hoopoe bird gives, which I'm gonna play for you on my phone. The hoopoe bird was named for its call. So it makes like a whoop whoop sound. And here it is. Could you hear it? Whoop whoop, whoop whoop. Okay, so I'm gonna ask that you all make that call with me and we are going to see if this hoopoe puppet of mine can come join us. I'm gonna put my hand down here and now we're gonna call. Are you ready? Here we go. Whoop whoop, whoop whoop, whoop whoop, whoop whoop. Oh, there you are. How nice of you to join us. Whoop whoop, whoop whoop, whoop whoop. Oh, yes, here's my hoopoe bird. Isn't he gorgeous? Yes. So I want to show you what I made this hoopoe bird out of, and maybe it will inspire you to make something out of the things you find around your house. If you know this, you can put into the chat, okay? Here's the last question for you guys for the evening, I think. What is the main part of the hoopoe bird? bird puppet made out of. Can you tell what this is? I'm gonna wait and see if anybody mentions it. Ah, yes, pliers, very good, okay. So I thought, what looks like a bird's beak? And I thought and I thought and I realized, well, pliers kind of do. And I love that idea because I feel like humans look to nature a lot to um, get inspired for ideas. And the bird's beak is so functional, so important. It does so many things that we maybe can't do. So we make a tool that can do those things for us. So when I ordered the pliers to make my hoopoe bird, it came as a set with the cutesy little baby plier in there too. Isn't it cute? <laughs> 
I just love this. Maybe I'll make a baby hoop hoop. But I wanted to show it to you because it shows you that when the pliers came, they were red. They had the brand name on it. And you can see here on one side, you can see the hinge, which looked like an eye to me. And the other, it doesn't. So I took those pliers and I looked at those pictures like Karen showed you. And I thought, OK, I need to paint my bird brown. So I painted the body brown. And I definitely need a crown and I need some wings. So I thought, what can I make that crown out of? And I decided paper, but guess what? There are so many different kinds of paper out there. Think of all the paper you know. There's printer paper, there's construction paper, there's cardstock, there's tissue paper, there's wrapping paper, there's newspaper, there are brown bags. There's so much paper out there. So what was I going to use? Well, here's the fun of making things is I started experimenting. And for the crown, I finally decided that this was the best paper to use. And some of you know what this is. This is a coffee filter. And I took it and I folded it and then I painted it. And I even added a little gold, which I'm not sure the real bird has any gold, but it helps the puppet shimmer a little bit. And I liked that effect. Then I also had to make the wings and I experimented with more paper. And I decided that printer paper would work best for the wings. So I took it and I folded it accordion style, you know, back and forth, back and forth, pinched it together, and now I have wings. And then I had to paint them. And this was kind of neat. I discovered this too, because I didn't go to art school or anything. So it's all about learning as I go. And I snipped into the each fold and I cut a little point into it. And I was really pleased with the effect that gave it, really made it look more like feathers. And then finally, I made the tail out of another kind of paper. This one is cardstock, it's much stiffer. And that's what I made the tail out of. So there you have my hoop hoop bird. Hoop hoop, hoop hoop. And I'm just gonna bring Rebecca back really quickly so she can say good night to everyone. Rebecca. Yeah, wow. I like that hoopoo bird. Yeah? Yeah, now I wanna make a puppet. Oh, I'm glad that you were inspired today. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I would really like to thank Karen for her storytelling. Yes, thank you, Karen. And Rebecca, can you remind everyone uh, what you learned from this hoopoo bird story, King Solomon and the hoopoo bird? Yes. I learned that the hoopoe bird taught King Solomon compassion. Yes. And he taught, he taught King Solomon and Queen Sheba that you have to be careful how you use your power. So just because you have power doesn't mean you can hurt people with it. That is very right. So Rebecca and I wish that um, you find compassionate people in your lives and that you have a very happy, holiday season and be inspired to be creative in whichever way you enjoy. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. So thank you so much, Nicole, and thank you, Karen, and thank you, Rebecca, and thank you to the Hoopoo Bird. This was wonderful. Um, we really, we hope you enjoyed this program and we appreciate and thank the Mission and Foundation for inviting us to share these stories with you. And we have two more stories in this series coming up in uh, 2021. So please uh, like or follow us on social media and stay in touch so we can uh, all be here again next time. And until then, happy holidays and good night. Good night, everybody. Night. So see you here again next time. Thank you.